Hey everyone, uh, this is Mike, and welcome back to Living a Life of Optimism, Resilience, and Hope. Today we're going to talk about what happens when what you have in your quality world doesn't match the real world. Um, this is a big issue. We have dreams, we have hopes, we have things that we want, and it doesn't match what's going on in the real world. And that causes us some discomfort, or pain, or sadness, depression. Uh, or sometimes we had something, we thought we had it, and we lost it. Uh, we had that relationship, and it's no longer there. The problem is when we have something in our real world, however, however it, it is, it, it's always matched with a quality world. And once something is in our quality world, we have a hard time removing it. So if you're in a relationship, and that relationship ends, the relationship may end, but the person who represented, who was in that relationship, is still in your quality world. You can't get them out. And I'll give you an example. In the beginning of uh, Romeo and Juliet, Romeo was, Romeo was pining away for Rosalind. And Rosalind wanted nothing to do with Romeo. I guess, uh, to use a modern term, uh, he was too emo. And, uh, but Romeo was pining away, complaining to his friends, driving them crazy. And um, he just couldn't get her out of his mind because Rosalind was in his quality world. And even though she wasn't in the real world with him, he just couldn't stop thinking about her, and he was depressed and sad. And finally, his friends find, got him to go to a party where he met Juliet, um, and it was only by meeting Juliet. Juliet replaced Rosalind in Romeo's quality world. Uh, now, of course, at the end, they both, they both uh, killed themselves and died, so it's not the, the best ending of a story, but the idea is this, that once something's in our quality world, it's hard to get it out and we have to replace it with something else or just figure out a way to diminish those images, have less expectations. So what happens when we have something in our quality world that doesn't match our real world? Well, we, we engage in behaviors to try to bring them closer together, to try to bridge that gap. And when I say behaviors, I mean, as William Glasser described it in his book, Choice Theory, total behaviors. When we behave, we do four, four things simultaneously. We think about it, we take some kind of an action, we have some kind of emotion, and there's our body reacts in a physiological way. Now, if you're calm about something, you can just, you know, what is your thinking? Your thinking is, oh, I'm calm, things are going well. What is your action? You're sitting down on a chair or a couch. What are you feeling? Uh, calm, uh, satisfied. And what is your body doing? Well, just, you know, the heart rate is going, your pulse, it's, everything's fine. When you're upset, what is your behavior? When well, you're thinking, I can't believe this is happening to me. This is the worst thing in the world. What are you doing? Maybe you're fidgeting or you're running around back and forth. You don't know what to do. Um, how are you feeling? Depressed, anxious, sad. And what is your body doing? Your heart rate may be beating a mile a minute. So all four things are going on at the same time. So when we have this discrepancy between what's in our quality world and what's in our real world, that gap, that discrepancy causes us some discomfort, it causes us some pain, some sadness, some anxiety, some depression, some stress, some anger, and we are then motivated to do something to fix it, to get the real world more in line with our quality world. Now in the case of Romeo and Juliet, in Romeo, what was he doing uh, when having Rosalind in his quality world was not matching the real world? Well, he was choosing to depress. He was thinking, oh, how sad he is, how lonely, I miss Rosalind. What was he doing? Whining, pining away, you know, being by himself, maybe uh, complaining to his friends. Okay, how was he feeling? Depressed, sad. Um, you know, and his, and his body, he probably just was very lethargic. His, you know, he was very down. You know, maybe his uh, pulse, maybe he could barely get a, a pulse. Or maybe when, you, when he thought of her, his pulse was going a mile a minute. So there was four things going on with Romeo. So was that effective or ineffective behavior? He was behaving, he was doing four things. Was that effective or ineffective? Most of us would think it was ineffective. Pining away, complaining to your friends, roaming around, saying, poor me, I, there's nothing I can do, feeling down. Those are not the most effective ways of responding to this discrepancy between what was in his quality world and what he wanted in his real world. What would have been more effective? Well, going out and meeting people. Uh, eventually his friends got him to go to that party where he met Juliet. 
But going out, doing something, being with your friends, talking, having a good time, trying to have a good time, uh, maybe thinking more positive thoughts, going for a walk and appreciating the beauty uh, or nature, playing with your dog, reading a good book, um, you know, th those, are, those are thoughts and behaviors that will lead to more effective emotions. Now think of it as a front wheel drive car. The front wheels are your thoughts and behaviors because those are the ones you have most control over. And your back wheels are your feelings and your physiology. Those follow, those follow the front wheels. It's hard for us to directly control our emotions or our physiology. But based on what we do, you know, you want to get the heart rate up, run. You take an action, go for, go for a run, your heart rate's going to go up. Um, you want to feel depressed, start thinking terrible thoughts about yourself and about the world. So we have more direct control over our thoughts and actions than we do over our feelings and physiology. But the good thing is it's much easier to change. We can change our thoughts. We can think more positively. We can think more rationally. That's what cognitive behavioral therapy is all about. We can change our cognitions and we can change our behaviors to make them more effective. And that's really what it is. It's not about a good or bad behavior or thought. thought. It's about what is effective or ineffective. What helps us achieve our goal or pushes us further away. So what I'd like you to do is when things are going wrong, uh, when your quality world does not match the real world. What are some, um, what are some feelings that you have? Is it sadness? Is it anger? Maybe pick an example. Obviously, the feelings are different depending on what the mismatch is. Um, but what, what are some of your feelings? Sadness, depression, loneliness, um, you know, calmness, happiness, um, anger, stress, um, you know, um, so just think about what your feelings are, okay? Then what are your physical symptoms? Do you get a headache? Does your stomach get upset? Do you clench your jaw? Um, is your, you feel like you're gonna have a, a, a heart attack? Are you panicking, have anxiety and panic attack? Maybe um, your, your pulse rate, your, your heart, maybe your blood pressure goes down. You feel like you're gonna faint. Um, so you, what are your feelings and what are your physiological reactions? Um, just using an example. All right, then what do you do to solve that problem. You know, you're feeling physiologically and emotionally, you're feeling bad. What do you do? What's an action you take? Do you sit around in your room in the dark with the lights off, listening to depressing music? Uh, or do you go out with friends? Do you talk to people? Do you go for a walk, enjoy nature, play with your dog or a cat? Um, maybe paint, listen to music. What do you do? And then the last thing is, what type of thoughts do you have? Are you thinking, oh, I'm so bad, I'm a terrible person, no one will love me, I'm unlovable? Or do you think, look, this will pass, everybody goes through this, I'm still a good person, I'm smart, I've got good things going for me, um, I'm loyal, uh, you know, there's, there's plenty of fish in the sea, it's not just one person. So I want you to think about what you do and what you think um, when your quality world does not match the real world and you're having those sad feelings and maybe some physiological or bodily responses. Okay, so um, we're going to end it there. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen next. But last, last podcast, we talked about what do we value because that's what goes in our quality world, right? The career, school, intimate partner, family, friends. What are the things that are in your quality world? Today, we talked about well, what happens when the quality world, those images do not match the real world. And when they don't, we feel pain and discomfort and we're motivated to act and uh, to behave. And behavior includes four things, thinking, action, feeling, and physiology. And I just wanted to ask you what, you know, just taking an example, you know, what, what are some of your feelings? How does your body react? What are your thoughts and what are your actions that you do when, those, when there's a gap between what you want and what you have? And is it effective or ineffective? And so just make sure you do these activities. We're gonna do this again and again because we're leading to a certain end. We're leading to a way to get that gap closed, to get actually get what we want and to engage in more effective versus ineffective behaviors. Uh, I hope you found this helpful and I will see you on the next podcast. Thanks so much.